The good shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep and willingly died for his flock. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we celebrate still today the resurrection of Christ with the very joy of Easter itself. Let us enter worthily into these saving mysteries this morning by acknowledging our sins, our weaknesses, and our faults before the Lord. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that, putting off our old self with all its ways, we may live as Christ did, for through the healing paschal net remedies, you have conformed us to his nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with grace and power, was working great wonders and signs among the people. Certain members of the so-called Synagogue of Freedmen, Syrians and Alexandrians, and people from Cilicia and Asia, came forward and debated with Stephen, but they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they instigated some men to say, we have heard him speaking blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, accosted him, seized him, and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They presented false witnesses who testified. This man never stopped saying these things against this holy place and the law. But we have heard him claim that this Jesus, the Nazarene, will destroy this place and change the customs that Moses handed down to us. All those who sat in the Sanhedrin looked intently at him, and they and saw that his face was like that of a face of an angel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Though princes meet and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statutes. Yes, your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. I declare my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Remove from me the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. The way of truth I have chosen. I have set your ordinances before me. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. After Jesus had fed the 5,000 men, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not gone along with his disciples in the boat, but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they had eaten the bread when the Lord gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they said to them, they, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life which the Son of Man will give you, for on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> well, my brothers and sisters, Last Friday, we heard the story of how Jesus multiplied loaves and fishes. And I mentioned at the time, this is the beginning of St. John's sixth chapter, his discourse on the bread of life. And it's also one of the very few episodes in Jesus' life that is recorded in all four Gospels. Another one is Jesus walking on the water. And it's amazing how every time the story of Jesus multiplying loaves and fishes is told, Right after that is the story of Jesus walking on the water. What's going on here? you got to understand that Jesus worked miracles for his purpose, not so much for ours. Obviously, if you were a blind guy and Jesus restored your sight, that was a great thing for you, and you're very grateful for that, of course. But Jesus didn't do that just to give, be a nice guy and give you your sight back. He did it to accomplish his purpose. And that was to engender faith, first of all, in himself, and secondly, in the church. That's why we hear in the stories of the Acts of the Apostles, the, the apostles and their disciples are able to perform profound miracles. Again, to engender faith and belief in their preaching. We understand that Jesus performed miracles for, well, basically three reasons. Uh, the first two are the most important. First of all, he did things to show that he was the Messiah. You recall John the Baptist, who was cooling his heels in Herod's dungeon. Um, maybe he was entertaining doubts. Maybe he just wanted his disciples to hear from the mouth of Jesus himself. But in any event, he, he tells his disciples, go ask Jesus, are you the Messiah? Yes or no? But Jesus doesn't say yes or no. He just tells the disciples of John to go tell John what they saw. The blind see, the cripples walk, the deaf hear, etc., etc., and basically the message is, isn't this what you expected to happen when the Messiah came? Well, yeah. Isn't it happening? Well, yeah. Well, there's your answer. So things like making the blind see and the deaf hear, uh, Jesus does these to show us that he is the Messiah. Because basically in doing so, he's reduplicating the great deeds of the prophets of old, but on a much grander scale. Well, the prophet Ezekiel fed a hundred men with 20 barley loaves, Jesus feeds thousands with five barley loaves. Same basic miracle, but on a much grander scale. So by doing this, he's showing us he is the Messiah. But there's other miracles he did to show us that he's something more than the Messiah, that he is actually God himself. Because there's certain things only God can do, like raising the dead. So he raises the son of the widow of Nain, the daughter of Jairus, and ultimately Lazarus, and then ultimately himself. But another thing is walking on water. The scriptures are very clear on that, that only God can tread the waves. And so if you see somebody walking on water, it's, it must be a ghost because, you know, no human being can do this. Well, when the apostles see Jesus walking on the water, it's like, wait a minute, is he a ghost or is he God? Well, Jesus said, it's me, I'm not a ghost. Oh, okay, so he must be God uh, by the process of elimination. 
So that, that's why he performs this, these miracles back to back. To show that he is the Messiah, but something more. Because, again, Ezekiel gave him barley loaves. He's going to give us a kind of bread that is, well, only God can give. That is supernatural. That a substantial and supernaturally substantial change will take place in the bread he's going to give us. And so when he gets to the other side, the people who had had a free breakfast now want a free lunch. And so they come back and say, hey, can we, you know, can we do this again? And so Jesus takes them to task and says, you know, you shouldn't be looking for the wrong kind of bread here. You just want your belly full. Well, I can give you a kind of bread that doesn't perish, the kind of bread that actually leads to everlasting life. And they say, well, what do we have to do to get that? And Jesus sets them up. He says, you've got to believe. You've got to have faith. Because he's going to challenge them to a supernatural faith, a faith that goes beyond just having confidence in somebody. Like you have a natural faith is like the faith you have in your mechanic. That first of all, he's competent to, 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 to repair your car. Secondly, that he's honest, that he will, you know, uh, you know do his best job, uh, the best he can for the price you pay him. You know, and, that's, and so you have faith in your mechanic. That's natural faith. But a supernatural faith is a trust in God, a God who performs miracles, a God who performs for us supernatural things, which Jesus is about to do, to give us the very bread of life, his own body and blood to be our sustenance, as we will see as this story unfolds. And I thank you for this. Oh, Heavenly Father, we reach out to you once again. We ask you to be mindful of us and our needs and to pour forth your grace upon us as we now approach the throne of your majesty, confident in your power and will to save us. Lord, we pray for the church, the mystical body of Christ, that you will cleanse her from all sin, purify her shepherds, and make them worthy to teach, govern, and sanctify your people. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, <clears throat> Lord we pray for those who lead us in government and in the church and in households and institutions and corporations, that all who wield earthly authority may use that power to build your kingdom here on earth, a kingdom of justice and peace and love. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for an end to the coronavirus pandemic and for all those who are stricken and afflicted, especially for our first responders and medical people and those working for a cure. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Father, we pray for the grace of vocation and discernment vocation for our young people. Let them hear your call clearly and respond faithfully to that call. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for a deeper faith in the real presence of Christ in the blessed sacrament, that those who have stopped believing may come return to the faith. For this, let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> Lord, we pray for those who carry your cross through sickness, through old age and poverty, through deprivation, through persecution, and all the innocent victims of war and violence, crime and terrorism. For these, let us pray to the Lord. And again, for all the souls of our beloved dead, for them, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty, ever-living God, may the sacrifice that we offer give you the worship you deserve. We ask this <clears throat> through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. <clears throat> Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Overcome, therefore, with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, Mark, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. <clears throat> we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, but not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, who take, take away, away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take, take away, away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that ye should enter unto my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just remember, tomorrow we will have adoration all day from uh, at the end of 8 o'clock Mass till 7 in the evening. 
And please think of Carmen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And may God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, prowl about the world, seeking to ruin the souls. Amen. <clears throat>